Hi everyone, Phil from Tech for Techs here. Today we're going to be looking at the semi-modular power supply from NZXT. It's a C750 and as I said, it's a power supply and it's modular. We've got links in the description just below if you're interested in purchasing. Also click the links to find out the latest prices because the prices of the market at the moment are up and down every day. Before we go on to the main video, if you would do us a favor, click that like button, subscribe, click the bell as well. That way you'll get notifications of new videos and live streams we do. Again, doing all these things helps support the channel and helping to support the channel allows us to release more videos, better quality videos and more content exclusively just for you. Okay, as you can see, we've got the NZXT C750 bronze. It doesn't actually say NZXT on the front of the box, which is common with their products, only on the sides and tops. It sort of tends to tell you that, uh, but this is an NZXT product. It's a C750 bronze. It's semi-modular power supply, which basically means the 24 pin connection or 20 slash 24 pin connection is basically connected directly into the box, but all the other connections like your PCI Express, Molex and stuff like that you just plug them into the power supply if you need them so let's have a look closer look at the box as you can see you can see it there doesn't really give much away and you've got the white background the side gives you a bit of different uh, languages on there including a little bit in English so if you're interested in that you can just about make it out there on the other side of the box you've got even more languages the bottom you've just got barcodes the top it doesn't say anything other than what it says here and on the back, it shows you a bit more specifications if that's what you're after. But as you can see there, it says silent operation, compatible and efficient, built for builders. So obviously designed for people who are building machines, which that's what you expected to be before. And it says it's semi-modular. Uh, then you've got your different languages there. It says specifications in there. So this is the bit what you're probably interested in. It's your standard size, so 150 by 140 by 88 millimeters. The weight is 1.71 kilograms. That's including the cable. It's an 80 plus bronze. That's how efficient it is. There's different levels of efficiency. So it goes bronze you've also got silver gold platinum and so forth and the higher up it is the more efficient it is so the less energy it wastes so it saves you money um, running your computer uh, but bronze is okay um, it's what we'd usually class as more of a, a low end efficiency but it's better than not having a bronze certificate at all Okay, this is a basic specification and blurb from the manufacturer. It basically says the new C-Series bronze power supplies offer stable and safe power to all types of builds. The new lineup of bronze power supplies generate less heat, keeping your system running quietly and efficiently. Their reliable components make up a unit that is backed by a five-year warranty. The NZXT C-Series bronze PSUs are here to get your build powered up without letting you down. It is, in basics, an 80 plus power supply, which is certified. It's semi-modular design with durable sleeve main cables. It's got a silent performance with reduced heat and fan RPM, and it comes with a five year warranty. There are three versions available. They come in a 550 watt, 650 watt, and 750 watt, which we're looking at today. And the prices, again, these are recommended retail prices. Again, these prices can change on a daily basis, especially with everything what's going on globally at the moment. But the 550 watt is priced at 64.99, the 650 watt is priced at 74.99, and the 750 watt is priced at 84.99. Okay, so this is what you've got inside the box. As you can see, there's multiple different things here. The first thing I noticed though was the cables. They don't really tally up with what it says on the back. I think they're actually counting how many physical cables there are rather than the actual connections itself, which doesn't really add up uh, because it says there's one cable for a 24 pin connection, which is really, that's attached to the power supply. So I won't really class that as a separate cable, but again, it doesn't really tally up what's on the back. It should say on the back of the box exactly how many connections they are we'll go a bit more into depth with that in a few minutes on top of that we've got a power supply cable so obviously that's obviously going to power the power supply we've got the uh, eu version but obviously if you're ordering from the uk you will get a uk one 
We've got four screws as well, which you screw the power supply into the motherboard, sorry, into the case with, not the motherboard. Um, and then we've got a QR code on a piece of card, which is good. Saves the environment that rather than having 100 pages of a manual or 10 different manuals telling you all different things about energy savings and all this, that and the other, you've got a QR code there you can scan and that will basically get you the manual up, which is a good thing. Next, you've got a bag here. It's like a cloth bag. Uh, it's up to you if you want to use that or not to keep your cables in after you take it out of there. Otherwise, it's a bit of a waste, to be honest with you. It, you can chuck it in the bin or whatever. But some people may use that to keep the cables in, what they're not using, and then stick them in the bottom of a drawer or something like that. But that's totally up to you. We'll take a closer look at the power supply in a second. Uh, the cables themselves are flat black cables, and we'll take a bit closer look at those as well. Okay, so we've got a close-up of the power supply here and the cables. Let's go through the cables what are built into the power supply because this is semi-modular. You've got a 20-24 pin, so you have got the ability there for 20 pin if for whatever reason you're using something what does uh, use that. It's got also two PCI Express cables on there as well, which are the 6 plus 2s, which are the 8 pin ones. And you've also got a 4 plus 4 connection, which is also known as an 8 pin connection for your motherboard depending on how it's set up which is pretty good. Next you've got the flat black cables which you attach to the power supply if you're wanting to and it gives you another 8 pin connection or a 4 plus 4 connection uh, which is 8 pins in total which you will connect up to your motherboard as well if you've got a motherboard which needs two 8 pin connections or an 8 and a 4. Next you've got another PCI Express cable here and you've got another one here as well. So that's four there, plus the two what are already built into it. So that's six connections. So that's a lot of PCI Express cables. Just make sure you're not overloading your power supply because if you're using six connections, generally most graphics cards use two at the most. So that means you could potentially power three. Most power supplies, gen or most graphics cards run at around 200 to 250 watts, so it's putting you right on the edge if you do. Uh, so just bear that in mind, just because it's got six connections doesn't mean you've got to use them all. On top of that, you've got four SATA connections on this cable. On this cable here, you've got another two, so that gives you six SATA connections, also known as hard drive or SSD connections, and sometimes some peripherals like RGB controllers. And then you've also got here three Molex connections. That's what you tend to use on older hard drives and maybe some peripherals still depending on the case and the device. But all these cables here are what you call flat black cables, which basically means they are exactly that. They are black and they are flat, which makes them very aerodynamic and it allows you to reposition them uh, with ease uh, around your case so you can get it done for airflow and tidiness. So it's really good that you, they've got the flat black cables. But then the ones built into the power supply are shrouded cables, but they are black ends, which is good, which means that you won't have any multicolor rainbow effects going off on the actual uh, power supply at all. Uh, everything is black, so it will match in with your case just perfectly, specifically if you want a black uh, power supply. So let's have a quick look at the power supply itself. As you can see, you've got the six connections there where you can hook in your extra cables if you wish. And it's pretty simple. You just find the one connection where it goes. They're all labelled, so you'd basically push it in like that and then it gives you the extra cables. Obviously, if you're not using those cables, you don't need to plug them in, so that saves you having a lot of mess on your computer, so that's good. On the top, you can see the fan in there. It looks like, from what I can see, seven blades. Uh, it doesn't light up or anything, so it's pretty straightforward. On this side, you've got the logo, so NZXT, and then the model number, so nothing too fancy, but it's a uh, it's nice, it's uh, minimalistic, It's uh, at least it doesn't have big serial numbers and like barcodes all over the side, so it looks uh, fairly decent. The other side's exactly the same, and the back part, which is obviously where you put your power cable, has also got a rocker switch on there as well, so it's pretty straightforward. On the bottom side, or the top side, depending on how you're going to position it in your case, you've also got all your serial numbers and everything there, so that's good that it's hidden out of the way, because in most cases you shouldn't see that uh, at all. 
Okay, as you can see, we've got the power supply connected up to our power supply tester. This is a Thermaltake Dr. Power 2 tester. Yes, I know it's Thermaltake and this is NZXT, but if NZXT wants to send over their own tester, they can feel free to, that isn't a problem. Also on top of that, I found the Thermaltake one does everything I need it to do, and I've never have a, had an issue with any of its testing. So basically, you plug it in, switch it on, you press the button on the side to put it into standby mode, and you may even just see the fan start in a second when I press the button again. And there you go, and you hear that beep. First of all, the screen comes blue, as you can see there. If the screen's blue, that basically means that it's working as it should be. It tells you the 5 volt rail is actually working at 4.9, the 12 is running at 12, the 3.3 is running at 3.2, and so on. Yes, they're not exact, it's very rare they ever are, but they're within margin of error and they're well within the specification, so there isn't an issue there. If there was an issue with it, it would come up, for example, if I turn the power supply up, it would show going, hey, oh, the voltages are wrong, and so forth, and then it'll come up with basically a red error on there which it's obviously not doing at the moment because it's just turned itself off. But that's the idea, as if the power supply itself was physically off, then it would come up with a red error mark, for example, there. Okay, because it's not getting the right voltages, it's going up fail, 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 basically. So that's what happened if it was failing. So as you can see there, it's fully passed the test. Thank you for watching this video everyone, it's really appreciated you made it all the way to the end. Please make sure you subscribe, like, comment and even click that bell so you get notifications of new videos and live streams. It does help support the channel and supporting the channel basically means that we can release more content for you and also better quality content going forward. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.